During the Vietnam War, the M60 machine gun earned the nickname the pig due to the sheer bulk of the weapon. Since Vietnam, the M60 has served with every branch of the United States military. Officially adopted in 1957, the belt-fed machine gun was crew served and was operated by teams of two or more soldiers. As of 2005, the M60 is still in use by the Coast Guard and the Navy. The Army still uses the M60 on helicopters as a door gun. The Marine Corps, however, has officially phased out the M60, replacing it with the upgraded M240 in the 1980s. In the 1950s, Project Niblick sought to create a weapon for U.S. soldiers that would fire an explosive projectile farther than a grenade rifle, but be more portable than a mortar. The project was able to create a 40 by 46 millimeter grenade, but unable to create a launcher that was effective with more than a single shot. The M79 was first adopted by the United States military on December 15, 1960, and saw wide distribution throughout the squads in Vietnam the following year. Earning the nicknames Thumper, Blooper, and the Bloop Tube because of the weapon's distinct report, the M79 grenade launcher was able to fire a variety of 40 millimeter rounds, including explosive, smoke, and illumination rounds. A compact grenade launcher came in handy during the years in Vietnam, especially in penetrating doors, windows, and soft-skinned vehicles, as well as causing casualties in groups of enemies either during melee warfare or hidden under cover of dead space. The weapon resembled a sawed-off shotgun, but even so, the grenadiers who carried the M79 shortened the barrel and the stock to make the grenade launcher even more compact. While the M79 was accurate at ranges of up to 350 meters, the single shot design of the weapon could prove to be a drawback in a close quarters combat situation, especially since grenadiers often only carried a knife and pistol into battle rather than the standard issue infantry rifle. Even if a soldier had the luxury of time to reload during a battle, the M79 was at best able to fire about six rounds per minute. During the Vietnam War, grenade launchers such as the M203 were developed as attachments to the M16 family of rifles, largely replacing the M79 on the field of battle. In recent years, the M79 has seen use by the United States Navy SEALs and Army Special Forces because of its greater accuracy and range than the underbarrel attachment versions. Operation Iraqi Freedom saw the M79 employed in clearing improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, from roadways and battlefields. The M79 can also be used in a non-lethal capacity for crowd control in riot situations. The FBI and other law enforcement agencies use the M79 to fire M651 CS gas cartridges, and other agencies in many other countries use M1006 sponge grenades and the M1029 crowd dispersal rounds. In an effort to reduce the amount of gear a soldier carried through the harsh jungle terrain of Vietnam, the M203 grenade launcher was designed as an attachment to the M16 family of rifles. However, many variants of the launcher are compatible with a variety of assault rifles. A standalone grenade launcher, like the M79, might not have been appropriate for a close range firefight, but the unpredictable nature of warfare during Vietnam made such a weapon indispensable. The M203 allowed a soldier to readily and easily switch between his rifle and the grenade launcher, and most importantly, 
saw that the infantrymen would not have to carry additional artillery. In service since 1969, the M203 continues to be used by the Marine Corps, Air Force, and Navy, but the Army soon plans to replace the M203 with the updated M320, another underbarrel grenade launcher that boasts a specialized sight for use in light and darkness, a side loading breech, and a double action firing mechanism. Attachments for other weapon systems have been inspired by the M203, such as the Heckler and Koch AG36 for use in the German G36 assault rifle family, as well as the Russian GP25 for use with the AK-47 and its variants. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.